or the author of the story. Gustave Flaubert is a French novelist known for his masterpiece, Madame Bovary. He was born in, on December 12, 1821 in Rouen, Seine Maritime in the Haute Normandy region of France and died on May 8, 1880 in Croisette, Cantal of France at the age of 58 due to a cerebral hemorrhage. Madame Bovary is the first novel written by Flaubert, a realistic portrayal of bourgeois life which led to a trial on charges of the novel's alleged immorality. The publication of Madame Bovary in February 7, 1857 had been followed by more scandal than admiration. It was not understood at first that it was the beginning of something new, the scopulously, truthful portraiture of life. Gradually, this aspect of his genius was accepted and began to crowd out all others. Madame Bovary became a bestseller when it was published in two volumes. However, it was banned by the French government because of its sexual grant. And Flaubert was charged with pornography and blasphemy. Blasphemy is an act of speaking or saying something about God. But still, all the charges against him were dropped and the ban was lifted. The action begins in 1830 in northwestern France. The locales include the fictional towns of Tostes and Yonville and the real-life city of Rouen on the Seine River about 75 miles inland from the English channels. So that's the place where the story takes place. Before we proceed to the synopsis itself, let's be familiar with the characters first. So actually, we have two types of characters here. We have major characters and minor characters. The first on the list is Emma Bovary, one of the major characters, the novel's protagonist. The Madame Bovary of the title. So si Emma Bovary is a siyang country girl na lumaki sa isang kumbento. Later on, kinasal siya kay Charles Bovary and naniniwala siyang yung kasal nila ay ang magiging solusyon sa mga problema niya sa buhay. She harbors idealistic romantic illusions, covet sophistications, sensuality and passion, and lapses into fits of extreme boredom and depression when her life fails to match the sentimental novels she treasures. The second major character is Charles Bovary. Siya yung asawa ni Emma, a country doctor, kind but simple, dull and unremarkable. Charles is a terrible doctor who manages simple cases decently but is incapable of performing difficult operations. Charles dotes on his wife, which is Emma, who can do no wrong on his eyes. His adoration of Emma often leads him to act with baffling innocence. He fails to detect her extramarital affairs with Rodolphe and Leon. Again, si Charles Bovary, siya yung asawa ni Emma. He's a country doctor, but not a great doctor. He's quite lower than the average. Hindi rin kasi naging maganda yung experience niya nung kabataan niya. So kung ano siya ngayon, yun ay dahil epekto lang nung kabataan niya. Mamaya malalaman niyo sa story. Nabubulag ni Emma si Charles sa puntong hindi na napapansin ni Charles na may iba na palang kinakasama si Emma. The next major character is Monshu Homa, the apothecary at Yonville, a pompous self-impressed man of the bourgeois class who helps Charles become established as a doctor in the town. May one time kasi na lumipat si Charles at Emma sa ibang town and si Si Monshu Homa yung nakilala nilang pharmacist. Homa is superficial means he's quite sensitive or he's quite conscious sa physical appearance niya, sa damit niya, sa buhok niya, and obnoxious means he's annoying, he's offensive. He loves to hear himself talk and his lengthy commentaries are filled with cliches. Siya yung tipo ng taong mahilig magpahayag sa isang bagay na sobrang haba pero wala namang kwenta. The first minor character is Rodolfi Bolanger de Lohoche. He is a handsome skilled Casanova. Casanova means babaero, maraming babae, whose only goal in life is to woo women. He decides immediately upon meeting Emma that she should be his next mistress. Even at that early point, he knows that their affair will end when he's sick of it. He contemplates how to escape from their relationship before it even begins. Si Rodolfi siya yung second guy na nakilala ni Emma after yung makasal kay Charles. So, sa character pa lang ni Rodolfi, masasabi agad natin na hindi sila magtatagal knowing na si Rodolfi ay isang skilled Casanova, maraming babae, so mataas yung posibilidad na lahat ng meron kay Emma, since she's a typical housewife, lahat ng meron kay Emma ay paniguradong nakita niya na sa ibang babaeng nakilala niya. Next minor characters is Leon Dupuy. Siya naman yung unang lalaking nakilala ni Emma after niyang ikasal kay Charles. Leon is kind of the male equivalent of Emma. He's young, attractive, idealistic, and romantic to a fault. So si Leon kasi, siya yung nakilala ni Emma nung umatin si Emma sa isang ball. 
it's not a typical ball, it's a fancy one. So, knowing na si Emma ay isang idealistic na nagkakaroon siya ng um, preference sa buhay niya kung ano dapat siya at kung saang sitwasyon dapat siya mamuhay, nakita niya dun sa ball na yon na meron pala talagang taong namumuhay ng masagana gaya ng gusto niya. So, nung nakilala niya si Leon, doon niya na pag-isip-isip na malapit na siya dun sa buhay na gusto niya. Pumasok na sa isip ni Emma na magkaroon ng relasyon sa ibang tao pero nakonsensya siya at finokus niya lang yung sarili niya as a housewife and as a mother doon sa anak nila. The next minor character is Moncho Leroy. Moncho Leroy is the closest thing we get to a truly evil creature. He is remorseless and cunning. He knows all along that he will drive Emma to financial ruin and furthermore, he does it on purpose. So ayun, naalala niyo ba si Rodolfi, yung second guy na nakilala ni Emma after niyang ikasal kay Charles? Actually, nagkaroon ng affair sa kanilang dalawa. Tapos umabot sa punto na ayaw na ni Emma ang dumating sa kanya yung buhay na gusto niya. Bagkus, siya na yung gagawa ng paraan para mapunta dun sa buhay na gusto niya. Kaya ang ginawa niya, umutang siya ng umutang para may mairegalo siya kay Rodolfi. Dito siya umutang kay Moncho Leroy and alam naman ni Moncho Leroy na walang ipang babayad si Emma sa kanya. Piniyagan niya pa rin yun kasi alam niyang may makukuha siyang mas malaki doon sa kapalit. Mamaya sa story malalaman niyo kung ano yung kapalit na tinutukoy ko. Next is Birdie Bovary. Siya yung anak ni Emma and ni Charles. Birdie doesn't do anything in particular except show the faults of her parents. She's an infant and a small child in the novel and she simply is not old enough to act. However, we learn a great deal about both Charles and Emma through their interactions with her. So si Birdie isa pa lang siyang sanggol na wala pa siyang masyadong role or ganap doon sa story. Pero dahil kay Birdie makikita natin kung ano yung epekto ng decision ni Charles and Emma doon sa action nila. The last minor character is Madam Homa. She is barely even a character. She's another youngish housewife, but she couldn't be any more different from Emma. She's totally devoted to her husband's mission of getting ahead in life and she doesn't really seem to have any another ambitions. She doesn't really care about her appearance or about how the outside world perceives her. So sa movie, parang siya yung chismosang kapitbahay lang na extra lang na akala natin wala siyang great role dun sa movie pero meron pala talaga. Si Madam Huma ay isang kapitbahay lang pero naipapakita dito na kaparehas din siya ni Emma. Nagsimula ang kwento ni Madam Bovary kay Charles Bovary. Si Charles Bovary ay isang batang hindi makapag-adjust sa bago niyang school at siya ay kinukutya at binaguli ng kanyang mga kaklase. Kaya, lumaki siyang mahina at walang kabuluhan. Hindi siya nakapasa sa kanyang unang medical exam, kaya naging second grade country doctor na lamang siya. Pinakasal pa siya ng kanyang ina sa isang biyudang babae na kalaunan ay namatay rin, kaya naiwan siyang walang pera gaya ng inaasahan niya. Umibig siya kay Emma na anak ng isang pasyente at silang dalawa ay nagpa siyang magpakasal at manirahan sa Tostes, kung saan ginawa ni Charles ang kanyang unang pagsasanay bilang doktor. Ngunit, ang kasal ay hindi napantayan ang mga romantic expectation ni Emma. Dahil simula nung bata pa lamang siya, ay pinangarap niya na ang isang love and marriage as a solution sa mga problema niya upang makataka siya sa mga ito. At nang minsan maka-attend siya sa isang magarang ball, ay na para lamang sa mga mayayamang tao, ay hiniling niyang maging isa sa kanila at magkaroon ng buhay na maganda na ninanais niya. Na-depress si Emma, lalo na no, lagi niyang pinagkukumpara ang mga pantasya niya sa realidad ng buhay. Lagi niyang pinagkukumpara yung gusto niyang buhay, yung maginhawang buhay, na ang katotohanan naman ay isa lamang siyang poor village woman. Nang magunti si Emma, nagdesisyon si Charles na lumipat ng tirahan para makarecover si Emma at makatakas sa mga problema na kanilang kinahanap. Lumipat ang mag-asawa sa new town of Yonville at doon nakilala nila si Nahomais, ang pharmacist na conceited at walang ibang gustong marinig ng salita kung hindi ang kanyang sarili. At si Leon na isang law clerk na katulad ni Emma ay naiinip sa buhay na yon at gustong makatakas sa pamamagitan ng romantic novels. Nang maisirang ni Emma si Birdie, ang anak nila ni Charles, ay hindi siya naging masaya dahil gusto niya ng anak na lalaki. At ang pag-iibigan ni Emma at Leon ay umusbong pero nang malaman ni Emma na siya pala talaga ay mahal ni Leon ay nakonsensya siya para kay Charles kaya ang mga pantasya niya makikipagtanan dito ay hindi niya na itinuloy bagkus ay ginawa niya na lamang ang kanyang papel bilang isang masunuring asawa sa kanyang asawa na si Charles kaya sa tagal ng paghihintay ni Leon sa kanya na inip na ito at naniwalang hindi naman pala niya kayang makuha si Emma ay umalis na lamang siya kung nagtungo siya sa Paris upang doon ipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng law 
at nang malaman ito ni Emma ay naging miserable siya. Samantala, nakilalang muli ni Emma sa isang agricultural fair si Rodolfi na nagpahayag ng pag-ibig sa kanya at inakit siya nito kaya nagkaroon sila ng affair or ng ipinagbabawal na pagmamahal. Nalaman ng mga tao ang ginagawa niyang panglalalaki kaya siya ay pinagchismisan sa buong nayon pero ang asawa niyang si Charles ay hindi nagsuspecha sa kanya. Ang katangahan at pagmamahal ni Charles ang gumulag sa kanya upang magawa ni Emma ang kanyang panglalalaki. Ang reputasyon ni Charles ng mga panahong yun ay nasa alanganin kalagayan dahil sinubukan nila ni Homa na mag-eksperimento ng isang surgical technique upang mapagaling ang isang club-footed man na si Hippolyte. Kinailangan din tumawag ng isang pang doktor upang putulin ang paan ito. Nang malaman ni Emma ang kawalang kakayahan ng kanyang asawa, ay pinandirihan niya ito kaya mas itinulak niya pa ang kanyang sarili kay Rodolfi. Nangutang siya ng pera kay Monsieur Leroy upang maipambili ng regalo kay Rodolfi at iminungkahin niya rin makipagtanan dito o magtanan sila kasama si Birdie o ang anak nila ni Charles. Pero dahil nagsasama na ng mga panahon yun, si Rodolfi sa kanya ay hindi ito pumayag at lalo na sa pagiging demanding nito kaya tumanggi siyang makipagtanan dito bagkus iniwan niya si Emma heartbroken at nagkasakit ito at nagbitan pang mamatay. Nang makarecover si Emma, nang mong problema naman si Charles sa problemang pinansyal dahil sa laki ng utang ni Emma at sa pambayad ng pagpapagamot nito. Pero, dinala niya pa rin si Emma sa kalapit nilang bayan or sa city of Rowan upang doon ay maoperahan. At doon, nakitang muli ni Emma si Leon at ang kanilang naudlot na pag-iibigan ay muling umusubo kaya tumataka siya at nakikipagkita kay, kay Leon na nang hindi alam ni, ni Charles. Kaya ang utang niya kay Leroy ay lumaki ng lumaki. Hindi siya naging maingat sa pakikipag-affair kay Leon kaya nalaman na naman ito ng mga kapitbahay o ng maraming tao. Nang magsawa siya kay Leon, hindi niya alam kung paano ito iiwan kaya naging demanding siya at ang utang niya ay mas tumaas pa ng tumaas. Sinabi ni Leroy na kukunin nito ang mga ari-arian ni Emma upang maibayad sa mga utang. Dahil sa takot na malaman ni Charles ang kung gaano kalaking pera ang inutang ni Emma, ay sinubukan niyang taasan ang perang kailangan niya kina Leon at sa iba pang businessmen at sinubukan niya ng prostitute ni Rodolfi kung bibigyan siya nito ng karampatang pera na kasing halaga ng, ng utang niya kay Leroy at maibabayad niya. Pero dahil nga nagsasawa na sa kanya si Rodolfi, ay tumanggi ito kaya sa sobrang depressed ni Emma ay nagpakamatay ito sa pamamagitan ng pagkain ng arsenic. Samantala, Nakita ni Charles ang mga sulat ni Emma, kina Leon at Rodolfi, at doon nalaman niya ang katotohanan. At kalaunan ay namatay din si Charles na mag-isa sa kanyang garden at ang kanilang anak na si Bernie ay ipinadala sa cotton mill upang doon magtrabaho. The initial situation is that Emma and Charles established their married life. After their marriage, they set up their household in Tostes for Charles. It's the image of their marriage is like woohoo! This marriage is awesome. But for Emma, it was nah. This is not a good sign for a relationship. And the conflict arises until Emma gets her first taste of the good life at the Comte de Andervilliers ball. This is where she attended an extravagant ball for those wealthy noblemen, and she started to compare her fantasy over her real life, and that's the conflict of the story. Then, Leon enters the picture. An eligible, romantic, adequately handsome young man, Emma begins to wonder about having an affair. For her, it has something to be excited about. Also, she believes that her fantasy is closer to reality. However, Emma felt guilty. That's why she fulfilled her role as a dutiful wife to her husband, Charles, that made the story complicated. So, the complication of the story is the time where when Leon enters the picture, Emma and Leon's love bloom, but she did not commit herself to having an affair with him. And instead, she just fulfilled her role as a dutiful wife to her husband, Charles. And here's the climax. Leon is out of the picture, but Rodolfi shows up soon and convinced Emma to become his mistress and Emma gives in to her desires and start her affair with Rodolfi. Instead of wishing things to happen, she begins to make them happen by whatever means possible. In this case, Emma's character changed. So that's the climax of the story. Leon is now out of the picture but another man showed up and that's the time where, where Emma cannot contain herself. She just gives in to all of her desires and her character that time suddenly changed. 
The suspense is, after Rodolfi got tired and bored of her, Leon showed up once again. This time, their broken passion begins to bloom again. Her lack of caution is notable not only in her relationship with Leon but in her financial decisions because her debt to Monsieur Leroy increases. But still, their affair resumes and gets riskier. So the suspense part is that after Rodolfi got tired of her, another man showed up and that's Leon, their broken passion once again bloom and kung dati na-contain niya pa yung sarili niya, now she cannot contain herself. She just go with the flow. And it is also the time where her debt to Leroy is becoming higher and higher. For the Denoma, Emma's despair arises because Monsieur Leroy demands his money and Emma does not have anything to give. That's why all the mistakes she made earlier are back with a vengeance. So the Denoma of the story is that where when Leroy is getting his money back, but Emma did not know where to get the money because they are just poor. And all the consequences of her actions is now having a vengeance to her. At the end of the story, or the conclusion, Emma commits suicide to escape from her problem by eating arsenic, which, while Charles died also in his garden after knowing the truth behind his wife's mistakes, and their daughter Bertie was sent to cotton mill for work. So in this story, that's the end. They both died and their daughter Bertie is sent to work to a cotton mill. So in this part, Righteous morality would have been the easy way out for this novel, but the author, Flaubert, doesn't take that truth. Instead, he allows us, the readers, to see the impact that the actions of a single person can have on the lives of others and make our own decisions about it. So what he's trying to say here is that we should always be responsible to all of our decision, to all of our action. Kailangan muna natin malaman yung mga consequences before doing it, before executing, or before mong gawin yung isang bagay. Kailangan alam mo at magiging responsible ka sa kahihinat na ito. Kasi hindi tayo sigurado kung ano ba ang kalalabasan. Pero whatever the result is, we should always be responsible and we should always take care of everything without without pagdadalawang isip nang hindi ka, nag, hindi ka naninira ng ibang tao. For the symbolism, let's start with the blind beggar. A picture of physical decay the blind beggar follows the carriage in which Emma rides to meet Leon also symbolizes Emma's moral corruption. He sings songs about birds, sunshine, and green leaves in a voice like an inarticulate lament of some vague despair. This coupling of innocence with disease relates the combination of beauty and corruption that Emma herself has become. While her words, appearance, and fantasies are those of an innocent and beautiful wife, her spirit becomes foul and corrupt as she indulges herself in adulterous temptations and deceptions required to maintain her illicit affairs. So, yung beggar, kumakanta siya nung sinusunda niya yung carriage na sinasakyan ni Emma nung siya ay makikipagkita kay Leon. At yung pagkanta na yun ng beggar ay sumisimbolize as innocence and disease. Innocence kasi ang kinakanta niya ay something about birds, sunshine, and green leaves while disease, kasi ang kumakanta ay isang blind man and beggar. At yung pagkanta niya na yun, ay masasabi rin natin na connected or maii-associate din natin siya sa pagkakaroon ni Emma ng beauty at corruption. Beauty, dahil ng appearance at kung paano siya magsalita, ay parang isang tunay na mabuting may bahay. While corruption naman, dahil kabaliktara ng totoong pag-uugali niya ang ipinapakita niya. Later, when Emma dies, the blind man gets to the end of his song about a young girl dreaming. Ay, ito na ito kayo dito na young girl ay si Emma. We then discover that what we thought was a song about an innocent woman is actually a body sexual song. This progression from innocence to sexual degradation mirrors the path of Emma's life. So dito naman, yung progress ng song, nung una akala natin ay, ay isa lang itong song na, 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 na sumisimbolo sa isang innocent woman. Pero nung dumating sa part na patapos na yung kanta ay biglang nagbago, nagkaroon ng sudden change dun sa progress ng kanta. Naging isa na siyang sexual song na masasabi natin na associate, associated pa rin sa buhay ni Emma. Sa una, isa siyang innocent woman. Pero pagdating ng padulong part ng story, nalaman natin na nalaman natin na na-degrade yung pagkatao niya because of her adulterous temptation and deception. So now, let's go to the dried flowers. When Emma comes home with Charles, she notices his dead wife's wedding bouquet in the bedroom and wonders what will happen to her own bouquet when she dies. Later, when they move to Yonville, 
she burns her own bouquet as a gesture of defiance against her unhappy marriage. The dried bouquet represents the disappointed hopes and for the new promise of a wedding day turned sour and old. Emma's burning off her own bouquet foreshadows the way her desires will consume her youth and eventually her life. So, yung dry bouquet nagsisimbolizes siya as disappointed hopes and promises na pinangarap niya sa wedding day nila ni Charles na hindi naman natupad yung mga expectation niya. And yung pagsunod naman niya ng sarili niyang bouquet shows how her desires consume their marriage and the cause of her death. Next one is the lay. Binette's habit of making useless napkin rings on his lay is a symbol with several meanings. First, it represents the useless non-productive ornamental character of bourgeois. Second, it represents something more ominous, the monoto monotony of life that traps Emma. In the scene in which she contemplates throwing herself out the window, Emma hears the sound of the lathe calling her to suicide. So, yung paggawa ni Binet ng, ng useless napkin rings ay maraming kahulugan. First, useless, non-productive, and decorative character ng materialistic middle class man. And second, dull and repetitive life of Emma. And finally, the lathe represents the craftsman repeatedly making a simple uniform work of art. Flaubert once compated himself as a writer to a craftsman working on a lathe. So, let's now go to the point of view. Supposedly, first person ang point of view ng story but it actually changes from first person to third person on the so, sa first chapter ng story, masasabi natin na yun ay first gumamit ng first person point of view kasi yung nagkikwento sa story ay ginagamit niya ang salitang we. And alam naman natin lahat na kapag sinama mo ang sarili mo sa story, ay yun ay gumagamit ng first person. Pero pagdating sa second chapter, hanggang sa katapusan ng novel, ay naging third person point of view na yung ginamit para magkaroon ng personal at intensely internalized view ng mga characters. is intimate yet detached. Intimate kasi familiar na tayo sa mga characters, alam na natin yung mga nangyayari sa paligid nila at naiintindihan na, na natin yung takbo ng buhay nila. And detached dahil kahit alam naman natin yung, yung characters, yung buhay nila, yung mga nangyayari sa kanila, hindi tayo masyado naaapektuhan ng story. Oo, nararamdaman natin yung, yung iba't ibang emotions like nagagalit tayo, naiinis, nalulungkot, matutuwa. Pero hindi siya sobrang nakaka-affect sa, sa atin. Kasi yung mga nararamdaman natin na yun, ay normal reaction lang naman yun kapag nagbabasa tayo ng story. Hindi tayo dumadating sa punto na nagiging sobrang lukot, umiiyak tayo ng sobra, o kaya naman sa sobrang inis natin sa isang, sa isang character, ay sisimangot na lang tayo buong maghapon. Ang pinakamagandang example nito ay nung namatay si Emma. O, oh, nalungkot tayo kasi namat namatay ng isang character yung story. Pero dahil naglagay doon si Flaubert ng statement na she had ceased to exist, meaning parang sinasabi niya na tumigil na yung, yung, sa pag, sa bu, ay yung buhay ni Emma, naramdaman natin yung power of death, yung bigla ang pagkamatay ni Emma. At nakita rin natin doon sa story or nabasa rin natin na, na nagluksa si Charles pero hindi ganun ka laki yung impact or yung effect sa atin noon. Naramdaman lang natin pero hindi natin, hindi natin sobra-sobrang naramdaman. Deception kasi paulit-ulit na niloloko ni Emma si Charles to the point na nagkapatong-patong na yung utang niya kaya nabaon na siya sa utang. At si Charles ang nagpapakahirap magbayad nun without knowing na yung pera naman na inutang na yun ay ginamit lang ni Emma sa panlalalaki niya. Next naman na theme ay yung greed. Dito sa greed, dito pumapasok yung kahit alam naman ni Monsieur Leroy na walang kayang ipangbayad si Emma sa mga utang niya ay patuloy niya pa rin itong pinauutang. Na kasi pinapatungan niya ito ng mataas na interes. At kaya niya pag ito pinauutang ay dahil gusto niyang makuha o makamkam lahat ng ari-arian ng mga bovary. Bali wala sa kanya kahit nagaano kalaki yung perang ilabas niya, basta at the end of the day ay makukuha niya yung, yung inaasam niya. Next naman na theme ay naivite. Dito na pumapasok yung kasabihang love is blind. Na sa sobrang pagmamahal ni Charles kay Emma ay para sa kanya wala itong ginagawang kasalanan, wala siyang kamali ang nagagawa. Kumbaga, nabulag na siya sa katotohanan na kahit alam na sa buong lugar nila yung, yung panalalaking ginagawa ni Emma, para sa kanya, wala pa, rin siyang, wala pa rin siyang alam or hindi mo alam kung nagbubulag-bulagan ba siya, ma ma malaki yung tiwala niya kay Emma, o talagang wala lang siyang alam sa mga nangyayari sa paligid niya. 
At ang last na theme ay ang prodigality and materialism. Si Emma, masyado siyang magastos, masyado siyang materialistic na tao. Iniisip niya na kapag may pera ka, masaya ka na. Na kapag nabili mo na lahat ng gusto mo, sapat na yun para maging masaya ka. Pero hindi naman yun ang tamang tamang mindset mo or hindi yung tama na ganun lagi yung iisipin mo na ka, ang happiness mo ay mabibili. Kasi ang happiness, it is it is just one of the few things na hindi mo kayang bilhin. Here is the moral of the story. Happiness is primarily a decision. It is not our situation that defines it. It is about how we choose to respond to our situation that really determines our happiness. It's a matter of perspective yung tinutukoy dito na kahit sa ang sitwasyon, kaya mo pa maghanap ng kasihan dun sa isang bagay na yun. Sa story kasi, si Emma nagkaroon na siya ng asawa, nagkaroon na siya ng anak, pero hindi niya napiling maging masaya doon sa pangyayari niya yun. Mas pinili niyang maghanap ng pagmamaal sa ibang tao. At nag-focus siya dun sa ideal life na gustong gusto niya. Pero kasi hindi naman lahat ng tao ay kayang maging masaya sa sitwasyong hindi naman talaga masaya. Social cultural context, Madam Bovary deals with many issues that are still prevalent to the issues such as depression, the relentless pursuit of happiness, and financial problems. Throughout the novel, Madam Bovary experiences all of these in a way that is surprisingly easy for the modern reader to relate to. So doon sa novel, merong issues doon na kinakaharap doon sa story na nakakagulat na kahit dati pa yung na-published, is nakaka-relate pa rin tayo kasi na-experience pa rin natin yun hanggang ngayon. Isa na doon ang depression and also financial problems at marami pang iba. Romanticism, our protagonist spends the whole novel going back and forth about whether she's in love, out of love, thinking about love, dreaming about love, and worrying about love. In other words, it's a lot like modern day life. Totoo na parang cycle lang ang nararamdaman ng tao, lalo na sa panahon ngayon, lalo na dito sa Generation C and sa Millennials, na kapag na-inlove ka sa isang tao, may posibilidad na magkaroon ka ng relasyon sa isang tao. Tapos kapag natigil yung relasyon nyo, na out of love kayo, mag-iisip ka ulit ng love sa ibang tao. After that, you will daydream about him or about her na paano kaya kung naging kami, pero hindi mo may iwasan ding mag-worry dahil sa past situations na na-experience mo. Realism, sinasabi dito na lahat ng tao ay may karapatang pumili ng own path, which is meron din sa Emma sa story, pero hindi lahat ng tao merong control or merong chance ang pumili ng own path niya. Pero si Emma, meron din siya nun. Sinasabi dito na kahit na meron siyang karapatan at meron siyang kakayahang pumili ng own path niya, mas pinili niya yung maling direksyon. Next is feminism. Actually, sa story, meron ding discrimination dun against women. Halimbawa nun is si Rodolfi, isa siyang Casanova. Marami siyang babaeng kinakasama at actually iba-iba pa. Pero no one raises a red flag there. Hindi katulad kay Emma na nagkaroon siya ng affair with two other guys pero hindi naman sinasabing tama yun. Pero bakit mas pinag-uusapan at mas pinag-chismisan pa siya ng mga kapitbahay? Kasi merong double standard sa women na kapag ginawa ito ng mga lalaki, okay lang. Pero kapag ginawa ito ng mga babae, hindi okay. Characterization. The author presented the characters by their social class. This is a book about the middle class. None of its characters are either poverty-stricken or fantastically hoity-toity. Next one is thoughts and opinions. Flaubert takes us straight into minds of our characters, revealing everything they think and feel to us. This is our best resource for getting to know them. He is unflinching and direct in showing us their deepest desires. So, ang bawat tao may desires yan. May gusto yung marating sa buhay at may gusto yung makuha sa buhay. Pero aminin natin na hindi lahat ng desire natin ay nasasabi natin sa ibang tao. Kasi, mababasa nila kung ano yung ginagalaw natin. What I mean about this is, our desires really affect our actions. Katulad kay Emma na gusto niya talaga na magkaroon ng masaganang buhay at nakita naman natin or nalaman natin na yung deepest desires niya really affect her actions. The author also presented the characters by their actions. Actions do indeed speak louder than words. We see characters say one thing and do another over and over again, thus betraying their real personalities. Katulad nung kay Emma nung nakilala niya si Leon, sinasabi niya na hindi siya aabot sa sitwasyong ganun, na hindi siya magkakaroon ng affair sa ibang tao, kaya nag-focus siya as a housewife and nag-focus siya doon sa role niya as a mother. Pero anong nangyari, di ba? Hindi niya rin naiwasang magkaroon ng affair with Leon and also to Rodolfi. Names. Many of the names in Madame Bovary comment aptly upon the nature of the characters. Bovary, for example, is a play on bovine or cow-like. So, sinasabi dito na yung author ay gumamit din ng pangalan to represent their characters. 
Bovary means na you are daydreaming na ikaw yung hero sa isang relationship and you ignore the reality in your life. And that is the character of Emma. And that's it. Thank you for listening guys.